Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Mobile World Congress 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Palo Alto, California, inside theCUBE's new studios, 4,500 square feet in Palo Alto. Just opened up this uh, last month and excited to be here. Breaking down Mobile World Congress all day from 6, 8 a.m. to 6 today and tomorrow. As their day ends, we're going to pick up the coverage, do the analysis, give some commentary reaction to all the news and also the big trends. And my next guest here in the studio is Sar Galai, friend of theCUBE, CUBE alumni, and former HPE senior vice president, GM of the, uh, the telco business, ran the cloud, done a variety of things uh, with Meg Whitman at HPE. Now he's independent board member and in between uh, gigs um, on the beach, clipping coupons, as we say. Sar, great to see you, looking good. Great to be here, nice You're, studio. Uh, I'm excited that you can come in. This is exactly why we're having this show here in our new studio, because there's a lot of folks that don't uh, take the big trek to Barcelona who don't have to um, uh, can come in and talk to us. And you've been a veteran of Mobile World Congress for many years. Again, you ran, actually built uh, the cloud business and also built the, I won't say NFV business, but essentially the telco communications division for HPE. So you know a lot about what's happening in the industry uh, and more importantly, Mobile World Congress. This is the year that all the accelerant is coming to the table, all the rocket fuel is being poured onto the bonfire, the matches are going to be lit, it's called 5G, it's called IOT, Internet of Things, Internet of People, the devices look good, they all want to be Apple, they all want to be over the top, running entertainment, smart cities, cars, 5G is the holy grail, we're done. Yeah. No, seriously, where's the, where's the meat and the bone on this thing? Is it real, is this tr transformation hype or reality at Mobile World Congress? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes hype or yes, yes, yes it's real? There's a lot of hype, there's some reality. I mean, I think, first of all, 5G is you know just the latest thing. It used to be LTE, now it's 5G. Uh, what does 5G actually mean? Yeah. Um, really, and you know, for people, what 5G means is you, you should have a lot more capacity, mm -hmm. right? So 5G talks about even up to one gigabit in certain cases, lower latency, and so forth. Now, the thing about wireless is, you know, wireless, there's no secrets in wireless, okay? It's not like... Uh, it's Ethernet. a physics game. Yeah, it's a physics. It's not yeah. like Ethernet where you can go from, you know, one meg to 10 meg and all you have to do is run Moore's Law and you're good. If that was so easy in wireless, right, now we'd all be getting, you know, one gigabyte, right? But we're not. So the only way you increase capacity in wireless is through smaller cells and there's some MIMO technologies and so forth. Uh, you know, 5G talks about technologies that will enable you to do that, but it's not, it's, it's, it's much more of an evolution than a revolution, and the people need to understand that. Th there's no fundamental shift. What they're talking about in 5G is adding a lot more uh, bandwidth, so using other, other, today, you know, most of the frequencies being used are sub five gigahertz. Uh, those are great frequencies to go through walls. They're not that great in terms of capacity, and there's not that much of them. Like AT&T might have, I don't know, 60 megahertz, the entire capacity they have in the US, and that's not much. Um, and so they're talking about using millimeter waves, other things like 27 gig, 28 gig, 60 gig. Now, those do have a lot more capacity. They have other problems. They don't go through walls. So, yeah. um, you know, I think we, instead of thinking about 5G, we need to think about, okay, what problems are we trying to solve? Like, what problems is this going to solve? I think in some sense, it's as, you know, while everybody wants more broadband, some of it is a solution looking for a problem. Yeah, it's but, a field of dreams too, dynamic. Build it, they will come. That has been a network operator concept, right? And then we know we know the operators, and you, you and I have talked about this on theCUBE actually many years, the operators are having business mo pro model challenges, problems, challenges, their opportunities, but at the same time, there's a bigger picture I want to get your thoughts on. So in a vacuum, 5G, there's limitations, there's physics, but now that you're looking at a connected network, and that's this is the end-to-end -end concept. So under the covers of wireless, assuming wireless has its, uh, topology, architectural uh -huh. uh, things you could do, smaller cells, different frequencies, obviously going through walls is preferred, longer distance, lower latency through walls, that's the ideal scenario. But then there's a bigger picture around the different types of wireless networks, but there's cars, there's mobility, actual true mobility, you know, 60 miles an hour in a car versus walking down the street or sitting in a con uh, stadium or at home. Yeah. So these are use cases. Um, how much of it is a wireless problem versus an other problem? NFE, end-to-end, -end virtualization? Well, I think- Help us parse that so through, how should we think about this? There's, there's two issues, I mean, so there's a wireless problem, we can talk about the different segments that make sense and don't make sense, or how much they have to evolve to make sense. 
And then fundamentally, the networks are very, um, they're, you know, they're, they're not that agile as we know, which is why NFV really, if you, if you remove NFV and you just say NFV is about creating agility. Yes, you're doing it through virtualization, yada, yada, but it's about creating agility, creating automation, right? You can't have these, a lot of these networks were designed years ago, even 3GPP, this is, you know, ten, a decade old. And so, yes, there's a lot of work that has to be done in creating much more agility in the network because the network isn't built for that. Just if you think about even simple things like number of subscribers that can go on and off, right? Okay, if you have a cell phone, mm -hmm. you know, like today, if you look in the world, there might be 8 billion subscribers, let's say, you know, if you look at the number of cell phones and so forth. But, you know, once you start IoT, you know, you might have 100 billion because every device will be in the it's network. A okay, that's a different, that's a different <laughs> management system, right? Also, those devices may go on and off every day, right? Because you buy a new device, you plug it in the wall. Okay, phones, you don't start a new phone every day, right? People buy a phone to use it. So the network becomes much more dynamic. The back end has to be more dynamic. That has a side effect. And so there's a lot of work that has to be done in the back end to make it more dynamic. That's the, the back end problem. And then, and, and, you know, they are working on it. Again, and, and the bright spots there are what? I mean, what were the bright? What are the bright spots happening today, this week at Mobile World Congress, and the trends around? Well, the you know, I mean, Mobile World Congress is a, a show, right? And these are not sexy things, so we probably won't hear a lot about them. But you know, you hear about orchestration, automation, network function virtualization, basically moving all this to sort of the cloud paradigm, where you have a lot more flexibility. I mean. If you think about what's happening in NFV these days, for example, you don't hear a lot about it, but what's happening a lot is onboarding work, right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, okay, we've talked a lot about it. We've from that hype, now we're in the build out, right? Mm -hmm. So you hear less about it, but stuff is actually happening. So it's operational. It's operational stuff. Yeah, uh, they're 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 modifying the system so that they can be ready to work when you get to that point. Um, on the radio side, like I think the important thing to understand is, like you said exactly, there's multiple use cases for 5G. The most interesting and immediate one, potentially, is to use wireless to compete against cable, which is fixed wireless access. You know, there, you know, the, you know, the telcos for years have wanted to do it. There was this whole discussion about fiber. It didn't turn out fiber is expensive. Yep. You got to trench it. You got to provision it at <laughs> yeah. home. You got to roll you know, a truck. Took Google a few years to figure that out. But even for Google, it's expensive. You know, it turns people out, have done that. So they're crazy. But Google's got so many deep, deep pockets. And Facebook does the same thing with their kind of R&D projects. No, but they, you know, so they, they figured it out. But there are technologies. Um, millimeter wave is a bit hard because it doesn't go through walls. But I think... You know, when, when, when we talk about these capacities, it's not for your mobile phone. It's for mm -hmm. other things. It's mostly for fixed wireless access. There's a whole discussion about cars. I personally, um, you know, because we're talking about opinions here, I don't understand the problem so much because the reality is, you know, the car is going to be a mobile data center, okay? So 90% of the data that's generated by the car will be kept in the car, and the car will be sending analytics and metrics up. So it doesn't need gigabits. It's not like yeah. every time you turn, you need to get an instruction. I mean, maybe yeah. that's what the network guys want you to believe, because then you need like zero latency. Yeah. But you don't need that. It's much easier to invest in a better system in the car. Yeah. Uh, right. So the car is not going to figure out. The car out. is a computer. It's not a peripheral. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not a data peripheral. center. It's to a your full point. data center. It's the edge compute, so I don't think that's an issue. I think the car will need good coverage and so forth. Um, you know, so I, I don't. But see that's a different thing. So let's let's take cars. A great example. So let's take on this because this is a perfect mental model. A car is going to have all this capacity, like a big computer, or a data, data center, or data center. data center, a lot of things, a lot of instrumentation, a lot have, of software, look, it's glue. Gonna have, yeah, it's going to have ten computers, big systems. It's it's like a little data but center. But it also moves fast, so it's a true mobile <laughs> data center. Yes. Right? So it needs mobility. So mobility has trade-offs. Right, with the wireless at piece at least, that you have to, uh, you know, depends how you're uh, uploading. Again, it depends yeah. on the capacity. Mobility has certain elements when you get into Doppler effect and so on. And so, you know, it's, it's always a capacity trade-off, right? But, you yeah. know, you can, you can, I mean, you can, I mean, all of you have talked on your cell phone and used data on your cell phone in your plane. We know this. When the plane's <laughs> landing, that's 150 miles an hour when the plane lands, okay? And it works pretty well. So <laughs> mobility. We all cheat. <laughs> Don't turn on your cell phones. I'm again, texting my, exactly. we're landing. Um, yeah, exactly. We all have done so, it. So, so, again, if you want to run a gigabit, it's a problem. Yeah. If you want to run less, it's not such a big deal if a car is going 60 miles an hour. So it depends. Now, if you again, so if you define the use cases, I need a good bit for every car, and there's a million cars. That's a problem. If you define the use case as something else, it's not a big problem. There is a problem, though, and I think that is something that, that the 5G is trying to address in terms of more of the back end of density. Okay, so one of the like you density know, in terms of signal or density in terms of in terms of, of support. So, for example, when you can never like the one place you can never use a cell phone is in a conference. 
because too many people are trying to get on the same time. It's mm -hmm. right. It's, it's a typical model. And Space station issues, yeah, all kinds breaks. of breaks. And so with a car also, you're going to have high density, right? Because like you have a traffic jam. All these cars are talking and receiving. So that's a bigger issue. And 5G does talk about that as well, but that's a bigger issue than, than pure capacity. Pure capacity, mm -hmm. great. I'll give you this much megahertz and I'll agree with that. do gigabits. Yeah. You can do that on Wi-Fi today. I totally agree with that. So let's take, let's take a step back. I want to get a little color on Mobile World Congress. Talk about what's going on right now. So it's dinner, people at parties. What goes on? And people won't always ask me, John, what always happens? First of all, Barcelona's a great city, so as you know, we've been there uh, together for some HP events, but also uh, as well as Mobile World Congress. What's happening? The show, is, you, you always make the comments, a biz dev show, which means there's business development going That's on. Right. All the top executives go there. Deals are being cut, but also it's also a large trade show, as you will, for mobile uh, I mobility. Think, I think, uh, like you said, I mean, from my experience, um, the biggest value of Mobile Congress is not the show itself, with all due respect to the show. It's the fact that everybody and anybody who's somebody is there, that's why we're not there, yeah. uh, is there. Um, and so you can meet people. And so if you want to meet a bunch of people, telco leaders and so forth, mm -hmm. so that's what you do. This is the place. You all say, okay, we'll meet Mobile Congress. So like, for so example, when I was down there, and I'm sure this is what people are doing right now, I basically go back to back from 8 in the morning till 10 at night in meetings, dinners, whatever, with CEOs of various telcos or CEOs of partners yeah. and so on. Everybody's there. And you, I never actually got to see the show because I never got out of a meeting. Yeah. And most of what happens there is that. Yeah. And that's amazing because, again, everybody's there. And there's a huge ecosystem involved. Talk about that ecosystem because this is the dynamic. And first of all, we don't have to go there because we have the cube here. So we're there virtually, digitally. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we do now, which is great. In the studio, we don't have to save ourselves the three-day flight to go to Barcelona. Uh, but it's crazy there. But I mean, it is about the, the community because you have that opportunity to get the feedback, do deals, this is a lot of deals, a lot of deals happening. Also, feedback, trying to you know connect the dots and having the right product strategies. Um, what are some of the things that you think is happening right now from a business standpoint in these meetings right now? Are people still scratching their heads on over the top? Is it the classic problems? What's the current state of the union? Well, I mean, nothing. I mean, and you you actually saw, actually saw some interesting, uh, right? You saw Vimplecom, right, change their name to some other thing. So. Um, I think I think what you're seeing right now is there's still there's sort of t multiple dynamics going on, right? One dynamic is there's people maneuvering around how 5G ends up closing, and there was some discussions about that. There was some release done about hey we should speed it up, and then Enrique said no, this is not this is silly. I mean, so. There are some discussions, there's some maneuvering going on, like any time when you're doing a spec on you know, when does it freeze, when it does not it freeze, you know, the, 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 some of the telcos want this and so forth. So that's probably, there, that's sort of in the background going on. Um, they're still trying to figure out, you know, business models is still an issue. The people are experimenting and you're going to see a lot of that, you know, experimenting with apps, experimenting with these monetization strategies. So there's a lot of that going on, trying to figure out, okay, how do we monetize the network in a better in a better fashion. What do you think the best path is from your perspective? Just putting your your industry hat on. If you had to kind of lay down some some uh, you know epic commentary on to the telco bosses, hey, you got to cannibalize your own, get out in front. What would you advise them in terms of what to get out in front on, what to double down on? Well, I think some of them are actually doing this, but I think first of all, I think they should forget about worrying about technology. I mean, technology is very important, but you need to take care of that, but really they need to know what are they good at? What are they strong at, right? So they're strong at a customer relationship. They have customers that they quote unquote have as, as partners with those customers. They're very strong, so what can you do with that partnership as opposed to you know all kinds of other r r random stuff? Now, you know, if you look at what they're doing, they're doing different things. Some of them are like buying uh, different media companies, so on. There's no easy path, but they're going to have to use their strength as opposed to try to become somebody they're not, right? They're not going to become Google. They're not going to become Amazon. They're not going to become one of those guys. They do need to become more cloudified just to be efficient, but that's because that's sort of the, just to play, you have to pay that card, but they're not going to be better than the existing, but they do have a, lot, a very strong relationship with customers. They could probably sell them more things if they focus on good customer service and very, in, you know, customers are happy to work with them if they get a good deal and a frictionless environment. So, you know, I would certainly encourage all of them, and I know many of them are focused on this, improve your frictionless interaction for the customer. 
if the customer has a frictionless interaction and gets a good deal, they'll do business with them. Are you worried about the telco's customer relationship when they have this decoupling kind of trend happening where the consumers want to take their phone or device and uncouple it from the network and just have more mobility across networks? So if there's better connectivity, I could be able to hop between Verizon, AT&T, whoever. Um, that seems to be something that a lot of folks technically are saying from an architectural standpoint, having that personal-centric view versus a network-centric tie-in. Um, yeah, is that on the radar at all? Or is that still kind I of way fantasy? More, well, I think, look, it's like people are still using AOL, right? So, I mean, I don't think... <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, well, the point I'm saying is, you know, just be... They voted for Trump what, then, what, huh? What, <laughs> I'm not going there right now, but we can discuss that <laughs> later. Right? Uh, the the point is, if if you if you um, the 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 primary area where there's problems in that area is roaming, and there's a lot of discussion about roaming, right? Because you know, 55 or 60 percent of people turn off data when they go to overseas because the roaming fares are so incredibly expensive, which makes no sense really, because you're just a local. Like, why would I have a longer cost because I happen to have an AT&T contract in Europe? I'm not using more data than somebody in Europe, and it's going through the back end of the internet anyways. So I think there there's a great a, way to jack the user uh, with more fees. Yeah, but. You know that, that that's not sustainable. So I think there, you're going to see pressure of people, and there's some companies who provide apps and cards and SIM cards, but there's now soft ways of doing it. There, you're going to see pressure, and I think eventually that will go the way of the messaging, where they'll come up with like some WhatsApp. solution. Yeah, they'll come up with something that will allow you to have data at a much cheaper rate. Uh, I don't know that you know. Does it make sense to switch uh, carriers in the local market if you have a good price thing? I mean, you know, what's the point? So again, it all comes back to, do they give you a frictionless service? If they give you a frictionless service that is at a reasonable cost, then you'll use it. Mm -hmm. um, and so you got to look at places where, where they're going to have people leave them is where they don't do that. Um, and there are places they don't do that. Roaming is one of those places. So I got to ask you about IoT, obviously. It's, it's the hottest trend. Uh, AI is more of the mental model that people get their arms around. They see you know, virtual reality, augmented reality, they call that AI. It's more of a mental model, it's really not AI. But IoT is really where the action is. People see networks where devices, as you mentioned, are coming on and off. You just don't provision those as static devices. They're very dynamic. Um, your take on the IoT market, how, what's the, your, your view on that? Because so, a lot of action happening. There. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I've been involved in IoT and you know, people different people have different names for what T means. I don't <laughs> we'll go there here. T and P, <laughs> things and people. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, a watch no, on, T could mean things, it could mean other things too, <laughs> but the point is you know, the, 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 the IoT, you know, and I was in a company that was doing IoT when we called it machine to machine. Maybe if we would have called it IoT, it would have been better, I don't know. But the, 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 the point is IoT is this is extremely fragmented. It's a super, super fragmented market, and it has different ecosystems. The more complex part of IoT is not the front end, it's the back end. Of how do you manage devices, how do you tie them to some app, how do you configure them, provision them, you know, and it's- Because of the back end infrastructures are different, some are IT based, some are- No, also there, nobody, know, like, think about it, you got all these devices, how do you upgrade them? How do you make sure they don't start a denial of service attack on their own? Uh, how do you provision them? Well, how do you manage their life cycle? Right, you know, HP has some product in that area, actually global uh, connectivity platform, but other people as well. So this is a bigger problem. The back end is a much bigger problem than the front end. Because, you know, what's the problem? I mean, again, hypothetically, right? I can stick a SIM card into anything and it's an IoT device, okay? Most of these things do not have a high bandwidth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, low bandwidth coverage is pretty good in, in urban centers, not if you go to Utah, but other places, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so um, the biggest problem is the back end. Now, obviously there's a lot of advancements that can be done in the front end too because of power issues, right? The biggest problem with IoT is depending what you want, you, you have a power issue, right? You don't want something, you know, if you put a battery, for example, you know, we used to do this back in the day, right? You built these, we built these little devices, you stick them on containers, right? And then, you know, you can find out where the container is at any given moment, okay? That's great, but you know, how long does this thing last, right? So I think IoT is a very big thing that's happening I think most of the problem in IoT is not in the front end, it's in the back. Yeah, I would agree with that. Also, also it allows you to get more data too. The other problem is it's is throwing off more data, which is security, data, IT management, basic stuff. Yeah, it's seems it's to very be basic stuff, and that stuff is hard to fix because, again, usually IoT is not a, 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 you know, a greenfield. Mm -hmm. They're going to connect to something that exists. You're just augmenting it with IoT, like if it's power meters or something. So now 
you have this existing ecosystem that has to interact with something that's brand new. And so there's various companies who build interfaces and how to mm -hmm. solve it. There's management issues. But no, I think IoT is, 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 is a real. So let's talk about cloud. So cloud, you also had your hand at HP um, as well. You had a wireless background, uh, for the folks who might not know that as well, going back uh, before then. Um, the cloud really is an opportunity. We see that with Amazon, and then Microsoft's now got their stock up. And so, obviously cloud, it's a, it's a bigger game, it's hybrid, it's happening, and then you have all these other fringe things developing around the mobility piece. Um, how does the cloud um, change in the IOT, I mean, I'm sorry, the Mobile World Congress game? I mean, because it's now a show that kind of blends, it feels like CES on one hand, yeah. it feels like cloud world on another, it feels like, uh, IOT and telco world, and all these things are kind of in a, in a melting pot. Uh, well, I think to me, when I look at Mobile Congress, I think of, okay, it's telco world, really, because it's whatever the telcos happen to be doing is what the show's about, right? If, and, and if you think about the telcos, right, we're talking about companies that have a capital, like I think AT&T spends like, what, $20 billion a year or something in that range, that's what we're talking about? So you're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars of capital budget and whatever those folks are interested in is what shows up in that show. So it's still a telco show, Dom, you don't see that changing at all? No, more but, app, but, more it, but, but, but telco is, but what telco is, is changing, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the telco is now, I mean, 18, they have broadcasting, they have, so what I'm saying is whatever the telcos are interested in is what shows up in that show. Drones, I mean, cards, the telcos are, have their hands in all these things, yeah. and that's why it shows up in the show, because ultimately, again, the show is about the telecom space, and the primary players, if you go down there, you know, the big, the booth that are as big as a country club, you know, the Ericsson, yeah. the Huawei's, and so forth, it's a telco show. And people who want to be relevant, like Intel, as they want to be more relevant to wireless, is building bigger and bigger booth over there. But what telco is really is about connecting things, and as there's more things to connect, telcos get involved in other things. If they see a business opportunity, for example, drones, let's go back to talk about that, because there's a whole drone day and all this other stuff there. I mean, drones need higher, I don't think they need so much bandwidth, although it depends what kind of video you want to do, but they do need reliable connectivity. Yeah. You know, it's something useful, right? Yeah. And, and today you could argue connectivity, you know, it's not super reliable, it's pretty reliable, but you know, we all have drop calls every five minutes, right? Yeah. I mean, if a drone drops a call, that may not be that easy. Yeah. So there's, there's use cases around these things that... that yeah, and back to your earlier point, I think this is the most important for, for the folks to listen to and hone in on is that, there's a use case in every corner, depending on how the view of the market. I mean, drones, this is one. Take virtual reality, augmented reality, that's another. IT, enterprises connecting, entertainment over the top, smart cities. I mean, these are all kind of but I think what, nuanced you're, you're areas. Exa exactly right. When, but when people want to understand, you know, separate the hype from the non-hype, is see if you can understand the use case, right? If you can't understand the use case, or if the use case seems out there, then the technology is probably out there. Right, you know, the technology on its own is fascinating, but if you don't, if there's no use case that makes sense right here, right mm -hmm. now, like again, like for example, you know, if I get a, if I got a gigabit to my phone right now, would it make a difference in my life? You know, an extra 20 hours of battery life would make a difference in my life. Yeah, more so than this is a good point. Battery life's more important right now than connectivity, but as the network transformation, which is a big buzzword for this show, is coming to, to the surface, that's an end-to-end -end architecture with software. So if you think about traversing cloud, software, delivering of apps and services, that's different. Now the apps might have more headroom in that, in that case, but then to your point, the back end's got to be, under the hood has to be smarter. Well, or is, that, is network transformation not yet there? Is that well, still? I think what's happened is that the OTTs, what the OTTs did, right, the OTTs started developing 20 years later. And surprise, surprise, when you develop 20 years later, you have advantages. Doesn't matter who you are. And so their back end is, you know, a much further generation than the telco's back end. And yeah. so that's why when you connect to OTT services, it's a consumer experience, it feels seamless and so forth. When you connect to the telco's back end, it's sort of a mishmash. And so they need to sort of fix that and that's part of the NFV transformation they're working on. And this again, it's not because they had any limitations, it's because they, you know, they had existing stuff. It's much easier to build from scratch. Final uh, comment on Mobile World Congress this year and outlook for the next year, your thoughts. Well, I think you know we. I need to. We need to parse out what actually comes out of there. Um, it's still early. I think uh, you know 5G next. 5G is going to be what people are going to talk about. This is the thing. 
uh, and it means multiple things, but that's because the entire telco world, if you think about, if you look at the revenue of the suppliers and so forth, right, have been in a holding pattern ever since 4G sort of, you know, in China, they finished 4G deployment. And so the next big capital spending is going to be 5G. And so you're going to see the providers push anything to get that going. That's just the bottom line. Great. Sargalai, a final comment, just what are you working on now? Obviously, you, uh, we got to know you at a personal level with HPE, the very senior uh, roles, and the last one was you know, really handling that telco business, which you grew up from like a handful of people to hundreds of people. Um, what are you looking at? Thousands of people. <laughs> You're land grabber, kingdom builder. That's right, that's right, um, empire builder. Empire builder. What, what are you up to now? What are you looking at for opportunity? I know you're doing some investing. You're on some independent boards. Uh, what's your world like now here in Silicon Valley? What's your, what's your activities look like? And what's your thoughts on the Valley in general and entrepreneurship and your sure. activities? Uh, you have an hour to talk about that? No, but uh, the, the, you know, first of all, like what I'm doing, the good news is I'm sitting here in Silicon Valley. And so mm -hmm. I'm very busy doing various interaction with the VCs, with startups, consulting, looking at different businesses. There's so much interesting things going on. It's every morning you can look at new things that people bring over, whether it's tackle related, not tackle related, just some amazing things going on something from you know, new wireless protocols to codification and so on. And I also sit on a few boards. So I'm spending a lot of time doing that, uh, you know, looking at different things. What's uh, exciting for you right now? What's getting you jazzed up? Uh, there's so many different things. Like I mean, like, like I said, I think the things that What's are- What's the coolest thing? The coolest thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, some of it is, uh, there's some of the most cool things are-, are, are Confidential. Uh, are, are, yeah, stealthy, <laughs> I would say, but you know, I'm looking at some wireless stuff that's pretty revolutionary that I think could be you know, new protocols that sort of change the whole dynamic of how wireless works. That's pretty interesting. And then I'm looking at some other things that are just how you apply cloud to different problems in, in the world, right? If you look at the cloud paradigm, it's existed for a fair amount of time now, but you know, although we talk about it all day, most of the things in the world, most of the apps, most of the problem sets are not leveraging any of the cloud. They're still at best using you know, old, recycled IT, basically. Recycled IT, or you know, yeah. sometimes even Windows 98, for all you know, right? Yeah. So you know, it's like in you know, in Africa, you know, Africa went to wireless directly; they never did wired. So there may be a lot of industries that never go, you know, from Windows to you know, to proper data centers. They just go straight from basic Windows directly to the cloud. There's lots of opportunities that are interesting there. And, you know, looking at a few CEO options. Uh, but it's very exciting. I mean, there's yeah. so much going on, right? With AI, there's just so many things happening. It's really just a Well, let's get into that tomorrow. You're going to come by tomorrow at 4.30, for the folks watching tomorrow at 4.30 Pacific time. Sorry, we'll be back in here in the studio. We're going to dig into the entrepreneurial landscape. I think one of the things that uh, you highlighted that we were talking about earlier is that sometimes you have technology looking for a problem and the reality is most of the game changing opportunities come out of left field that no one sees. These are the revolutionary game changes, the new technology, the hard stuff, not just some app that gets built. There's some real hardcore tech that could be applied to some of these real problems. And I think that's going to be key. Sargala here inside the studio breaking down Mobile World Congress with theCUBE here in Palo Alto covering what's happening in Barcelona. We've got some still phone ins late night uh, in Barcelona. We're going to make those shortly. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break. Oh.